So if you get a text which refers to the nation of Israel being called out of Egypt, when the ideal Israelite is called out of Egypt, that's Jesus, it's the same thing. It's not a big deal. It's simply that they are of the same mold, same precise idea, in fact. Whether you speak of the nation of Israel coming out of physical Egypt in the past, or you look at the new Israel, the ideal Israelite, who is Jesus, coming out of Egypt, it's the same thing. It's a very economic way of writing, by the way, because you can cover a whole lot of subjects by making one statement. And here, then, you're to think and to learn that Jesus is the ideal Israel. And if he came out of Egypt with his mother and father, well, that's exactly the same idea as the ancient old covenant Israel coming out of the land of Egypt. So yeah, it reminds me, Anthony, of uh, Daniel 7, the famous yeah. vision there, where this son of man figure and yes. the sons of the Most High are obviously representative of one another. What is said about the son of man yes. is said about the sons of the Most High. So the nations will belong to the son of man, yes. and they will also belong to the sons of the Most High. For example, as the vision ends here, Daniel 7, 25, uh, the beast will speak out against the Most High, wear down the saints, but then the sovereignty, dominion, in other words, the kingdom, the greatness of all the other kingdoms under the whole heaven will, will be given to the people of the saints of the highest one. So what belongs to them belongs to the Son of Man and yes. vice versa. So I'm glad you mentioned that because a favorite verse of mine, the end of that verse you have on the screen is mistranslated. The whole kingdom under the whole heaven, nothing to do with going to heaven, will be given to the saints. That's you, the true believer, Galatians 6.16. And all kingdoms and nations will serve and obey them. That's mistranslated in your Bible. A stupendous truth is hiding there. It's not that the world is only go is going to obey God. Of course, they're going to do that. But the text there says that all the nations, or dominions, will serve and obey them, the people of the saints. Please cross out the word him there and consult something like the International Critical Commentary. And many translations get that right. I think about 30 translations currently do. You are the ones to whom that kingdom is going to be given. So I'm so thrilled that you mentioned that key verse. So yes, Jesus embodies the nation. You have a footnote here. In your translation to Matthew 2.15, Jesus, the Son of God, perfectly reflected the one God in his will. And thus Jesus was called by a name which described the unique work of the one God in Jesus, that is Emmanuel, God with us, or with us is God. Jesus, the ideal son, obedient always to the Father, learning the trait of the Father, representing the Father as perfect agent. So we're back, Anthony, to this uh, Jewish principle of agency. Let's see other examples, Anthony. The prophets say God gave Israel the Torah, mm -hmm. the law, yet Moses is called the lawgiver to Israel by yes. Joshua in chapter 22. The prophets say God brought Israel out of Egypt in Ezekiel 20, yet Moses <laughs> brought them out, says Deuteronomy 29, and again Joshua 22. And then this last one, Anthony, is interesting. The prophets say God will be the light to the nations in Isaiah 51 verse 4, yet his servant is the light in Isaiah 42 and Isaiah 49. So this is what's known as agency. Absolutely. The Hebrew word that people might enjoy, shaliach, is somebody who is sent, commissioned. And the Jews have a very clever way of describing an agent. If an agent speaks, it's as though his sponsor is speaking. It wouldn't matter whether God said that or the agent Jesus, or one of the prophets said it, it all comes to the same thing. Again, it's a very economic way of teaching. So you can embrace a whole lot of stuff with one idea. And you've mentioned then one of the great keys to Bible study. Indeed, Jesus is the agent. He's the son of God. Yeah, also, Anthony, a couple of other interesting yeah. ones I found in my research. In the mm. New Testament, Jesus applies this yes. Yahweh text about the light Good. of the nations to his followers in Matthew 5, 14, and look to the apostles in yes. Acts 13, 47. Uh, yep. They're a light to the nations. And Jesus called John the Baptist a light yes. that was burning and shining to yes. Israel. 
Good. In John 5, 35, which sounds like an allusion to Yahweh as the light of Israel in Isaiah yes. 10, 17, and by extension, yes. King David himself of course. is called the light to Israel or the light of Israel yes. in 2 Samuel 21. Then the men of David swore to him, saying, You shall not go out again with us to battle, so that you do not extinguish the lamp or the light mm -hmm. of Israel. Mm -hmm. We got then Shaw, the concept of agency is essential to understanding Absolutely. the Bible. Absolutely. Totally right. Agency, most important. 